Hello, hello, and welcome to the troop. Today I'm going to be running through the first few story missions. Um, just to explain some of the mechanics and uh, give you a bit of a guide as to how to start playing the game. We're going to begin with contact. I'm going to be playing uh, today with optional rules, gameplay rules enabled. Overwatch and Tabletop Bocage Line of Sight Rules, which is my preferred way of playing the game. turns to clear the junction area. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. This here marks the objective. This is the junction area. I have three units. Reporting. Airborne Infantry Group. Yes, sir. Airborne Infantry LMG Group. Receiving. And another Airborne Infantry Group with some smoke grenades. Yes, sir. Do these guys have any smoke Reporting. grenades? These guys also have a pair of smoke grenades. Okay. You see yes, when the unit is selected, at the moment I'm also playing with the optional auto move selection optional rule which means that upon selecting a player unit it will automatically preview their default move option um, in this case because they're infantry this is just move so let's have a look at what we have we have some enemy already revealed in the street although I'm quite certain there will be some others we have three avenues of approach we have the LMG team yes, covering the area. When, when the movement is previewed you'll see this red outline here. This indicates the area, the zone which applies to this objective. So I have to take this zone effectively. We have the LMG group here. I'm going to check the line of sight from them. And they have a clear line of sight to this target. Interestingly if we do the line of sight in the other direction from this enemy unit you see they do not have a clear line of sight to my unit. They have The line of sight itself is mutual, but whether or not it is partially obscured is not mutual. I'll explain why this is the case. This unit here, which has a clear line of sight to the enemy, this hedgerow here would usually provide partial cover and would partially obscure a line of sight, but that doesn't apply if the unit that is potentially doing the attacking is right up against it. It is assumed that this is no particular impedance to line of sight if you're right up against it. These guys, however, you'll see that their line of sight to my unit is is obscured, partially. There. The purple indicates a partially obscured line of sight, the blue indicates a clear line of sight. So, <clears throat> what I think I'm going to do is this. <coughs> Excuse me. Yes, These chaps here with their Bren gun have. Uh, I'm going to open fire immediately on these guys because they have a clear line of sight. You need to use the combined attack, which in this case is an infantry LMG and a submachine gun. And that's it. That's them wiped out. The unit has been eliminated. If we look in the attack log, we can see a summary of what those chances to hit were and the number of attacks that were applied, and the unit was eliminated. Now, because I've fired, you'll see that the yellow eye icon, the hidden icon, which still applies to the, has now disappeared from this unit. Because this unit opened fire, it's revealed where it is. Now, any other enemy units, we are at the moment, we don't know where they are, where they may be, but they are now aware of this unit. They're still unaware of this unit, and they're still unaware of this unit. So with that in mind, I'm going to move Receiving. these fellows up. I'm not going to move them straight out into the road, because I think that'll leave them quite exposed. So for the moment I'm just going to move them up towards the edge here and they can have a look down the road. They remain hidden. Now they are no longer prone because they moved three which would make them easier to hit but seeing as how they're still hidden it doesn't make any difference. And these fellows over here. Now they have an area of woodland right in front of them. Um, woodland will 
apply partial cover, uh, applies a partially obscures line of sight, but also at a certain depth it will actually block line of sight through. So if I do a line of sight from over here in the field, um, you'll see that actually the line of sight from this location does not extend all the way through the woodland. Same is true of this unit here. It extends into the woodland a little way, uh, where it is where the line of sight is partially obscured, but not all the way through. Um, so I can't actually see through this yet. What I'm going to do is move these chaps into the woodland. I'm only going to move them. You see that leaf icon indicating that they're, that Hex will be in woodland. That'll still be in woodland as well. I'm going to move them over to here. They'll just remain in the woodland and I should get a bit of a better view into the field beyond. Moving out. They're still hidden. Uh, and they can't see... Just They didn't haven't spotted anything in this field. Let's have a look. But their line of sight is partially obscured, which means they might not spot um, enemy units there. That's what the purple means. Okay. Put that in play. Ah! It does now show this flag, which was red, showing it was in enemy hands, is now white, which means it doesn't belong to either faction, neither the player nor the AI, but it is contested. And that, as you can see, is because I have this unit within the zone and I have this unit within, within the zone. So there's both enemy and player units currently within the zone and that objective is contested. So we're going to end the turn. Ah yes, some guys in the house. And predictably they have returned fire at my bread team over there causing some suppression but no casualties. Ah, we have a two-man patrol over here. We've decided to move out of the woodland. So we have three enemy in this house. I'm going to use the unit info tool they're Ostrapen, so they're not particularly effective infantry. However, they're still dangerous, and they are in a building, which is going to make them very difficult to hit indeed. So I'm just going to preview that. They are already yes, shooting sir. at these chaps. Just select fire. If I roll over, if you have a look on the uh, left-hand side of the screen at the moment, you'll see there's a full breakdown of <clears throat> the chances of me actually hitting them are minimal for all attacks, because they're in a building, which is good cover. Um, however, you'll see every single contributing factor that is impacting the chance to hit is listed over on the left. Um, so the fact that my unit is partially suppressed reduces their accuracy, the distance, the fact that there's building cover, the fact that there's additional partial cover, the fact that it's a small, small target, a very small target because it's only three, and the fact that the target is in ambush. In ambush simply means that the target has only just been revealed, that in ambush minus 20% will not apply next turn. It only applies now because they've just revealed where they are. I am however going to fire anyway because whilst I'm unlikely to actually be able to cause any casualties I would like to put some suppression on them so that their return fire is less effective. And there we are, 10% suppression. You'll see that their suppression marker, this little yellow bar, has moved down slightly. Now if they try to return fire on their turn it will be at a penalty. Now they still haven't seen these chaps over here. I'm going to move all the way around. And we have a good, in fact, if I'm just going to rotate over here, I'm going to check the line of sight from that enemy unit in the building. And you can see they've got a bit of a dead ground here where I can sneak up on them due to this tall hedge here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, hmm, if I run these chaps across the road, can they see them? Ooh don't think so. I think I should be able to run around that corner. I'm going to try. Reporting. I'm going to run up to this hedge here. Moving out. And they remain hidden, so they've done it. <clears throat> These fellows over here are down behind their hedge. They still haven't been spotted. These chaps are in the open, so I'm going to open fire Saving. on them right now. They are lying down. They are prone to make them more difficult to hit, but in the open I should still be able to do some damage. 19 by 3, 47 by 3. And there they go. Two of them down. Okay. That's the end of my turn. Those rifles continue to fire at my brand team. I, they're very unlikely to cause any Infantry casualties. In buildings can be tough to dislodge with small arms fire. Try to get your men right up to the building and pop a grenade through the window. Good advice. That's what we're going to try and do. So, we're going to continue firing at them yes, with this blend team to keep their heads down as best we can. 
20% suppression this time. Wonderful. These chaps will run across the road. Now these, there are two positions in this building, and they are on the far side. If I actually check their line of sight again, there are two potential tiles for them to be in, and they're in this one over here. But from there, again, there's dead. There's a dead zone here, where they don't have line of sight. So I'm going to hop these guys over the hedge and up to this wall. Hopefully, they will remain in that dead zone. Ah, no, they were already, <clears throat> they were already revealed. Um, now the question is, what to do with these fellows? Reporting. I can run them right up to the building, but if I do so, that will use up all four of their movement, and that exclamation mark there indicates that that'll be a final action, meaning that they can't do anything else this turn, including throw a grenade or make any other attack, and they'll be fired at on the opposition turn at point blank range, which was quite likely to get them all killed. So I need to move a little closer. If I were in this position, then I could charge one, two, three, and throw a grenade in the window. So I'm just going to shuffle these guys up to the hedge. Moving out. Um, because they're only moving one, they remain prone. And from this position, because I'm using the optional Bocage tabletop uh, line of sight rules, um, they do actually have line of sight through. But to fire from this position... Reporting. As a target in a building, they're unlikely to do much damage. You can see, still minimal, even then, just because they've moved a little bit and because they're still in a building. Very, very difficult targets to hit, and these guys still haven't been revealed. So I'm going to keep them quiet. And then next turn, one, two, three, and hopefully we can pop a grenade through the window and deal with these chaps. Yes. I'll continue to fire. Ah, they have some more friends. Another patrol. Oh, and they've taken out one of my guys. Oh, that was a lucky hit. What was the chance? I only had an 11% hit chance, and they still managed to hit one. Okay. Right. Well, let's continue yes, Continue our tactic. Excuse me. <coughs> a little bit of a frog in my throat. Right. Um, continue to fire at this building. 30% suppression this time. Wonderful. Um, I might be exposing these fellows a little bit, but I do need to clear this house as quickly as I can. Reporting. So, one, two, three. Moving out. And sure enough, I still have the ability to pop grenade through the window. Grenades have a fixed hit chance, if you can get close enough. Three chances of 50% to cause casualty. Through the window. One, two, three. All of them down. Good lucky grenade there. These fellows Saving. over here have taken a casualty. They can fire back, uh, and they should probably be effective. What have we got? Minimal. Well, we may as well. Bit of suppression. This unit here, and there we are. Turn, end of turn four. Okay, they're moving up. I'm gonna fire again. Ineffective after having moved. Um, these chaps can't do much over here. They can't see the enemy, so I'm going to run them forward across the field. Try and bring that Bren up to somewhere where it'll be useful. These chaps, I think it might be safest to actually get them into the building where they can fire on. Is there a line of sight from this? They're just too deep in the woodland. So, instead of going into the building, I'm going to flank Reporting. these chaps. I'm going to come over here and try and charge them next turn through the woodland. Moving out. It's a little bit risky. And there we are. These fellows Receiving. keep them occupied, keep firing. 10% suppression. Okay, end turn 5. Ooh, they're coming through the woodland again. I'm moving, moving up to try and to retake the objective. However, unfortunately for them, my fellows are behind them. Reporting. Now I can shoot at them from here. They're just about close enough. Oh yeah, that's good. And there they go. Eliminated. The area is clear of enemy infantry. But don't get cocky. Like most of those defending the beaches, these were reluctant conscripts from the east forced into service. You'll have a much tougher time against motivated first-tier soldiers. And there we are. 
Victory in turn 6, gold star, 10 enemy casualties to my 1. Little annoyed I couldn't pull it off without losing a single man. We have a look at review the battlefield here. You find there are no enemy units remaining. We've eliminated all of them. Um, yeah, and uh, this would have turned into our control. However, you automatically win upon eliminating all enemy units. So our win actually came before this objective had a chance to to uh, to register that it was now ours. <laughs> okay. Okay, we're now going to have a look at the uh, second scenario. This is an uh, actual D-Day beach scenario with um, commandos being supported um, by our first piece of armour. This tip here refers to large conspicuous vehicles which get spotted at much longer ranges if they are moving. particular mission contains uh, an allied force, a player ally force, which is a un friendly units which are not controlled directly by the player, but are also controlled by an AI system. The, the left hand side of this beach here, these blue units, On these the light, blue, light blue units, are uh, player ally units. So they're going to be on our side, but we don't have command control over them. And we need to try and help them get off the beach. Now they get to go first in this particular Your close support tank can <coughs> cover the infantry's advance from here but can advance no further until your commandos have neutralized the AT bunker on your right Okay, so let's have a look at the situation These are the um, friendly forces not under player control you um, can see that they're already trying to make their way up the beach and fire at these German positions in these fortified buildings. So this is going to be difficult for them. We can already see that the enemy forces are in taller buildings. This is, this is probably even more than this. And these guys are crossing open ground um, and they're, gonna get, they're likely going to get cut to pieces so we have to try and help them. Um, we have a dead tank here already which has been taken out by the anti-tank gun in this bunker over here. Uh, this bunker is protected from direct fire. Um, if I, oh, we have our own armor here, and we have three commandos units here. Receiving. Who are very good over rough terrain. Have smoke grenades. Now we have a centaur. Yes, sir. Which is um, a very good. Very good for taking out um, infantry and uh, in-place guns. However, from his current location, because of the way this bunker is set up, I don't think he doesn't quite have line of sight into that into that bunker from where he is. And if he moves any further forward, he's going to suffer probably the same fate as this tank here. So, what I'm proposed to do... Oh, we have an enemy machine gun positioned there as well. I'm sure there'll be more, and another one back there. Anything else? No. Okay. What I propose to do is use the Centaur yes, sir. to help our friends over on the left by bombarding these houses um, and whatever threats there are. And I'm going to try and get our commandos up to this gap in the wire where they're going to swarm this bunker and take out the anti-tank gun. Once that anti-tank gun is out of the way, hopefully we can move the Centaur up and uh, do some real damage. Right. Now this machine gun position here is threatening my own infantry who have almost no cover on their approach. So before, I'm so sorry chaps, you're going to have to tough it out for another turn in the face of the enemy. Um, I'm going to try and deal with this position here using the centaur. Yes, sir. Centaur. I'm going to aim. 
heavy weapons require aiming before. There we are. And you can see that at, even at this range, even in that, even in, in an in place position, this machine gun team, I have six chances of 37% to do to do some damage. I'm going to open the hatches here as well, which means on future shots, um, my cumulative aim bonus will uh, will get better quicker, and the spotting of the crew is slightly better. So let's have a go. Coax your machine gun and the main gun. We only caused one casualty. So one of those chaps has survived. <coughs> but there you'll see there um see here the um their um steadiness has been heavily, heavily reduced by that that eighty percent suppression. I think we have a look in here. Yeah, we only caused one. Um, so even though one of them has survived, this unit is going to be pretty ineffective next turn. And the turn after that, if he's still in there, I'll put another shell in there and finish him off. Right. Given that he's not very effective anymore, I'm going to charge these Receiving. fellows up the beach towards this gap. Maybe I can get them into some of these craters here. Um, run them up. Yes, sir. I'm going to run this machine gun team up way. as well. Just going to... <clears throat> and, oh, they've just spotted someone. Who have they spotted? Oh, okay. So, there's a couple of chaps back here in this position as well who just got some a line of sight through there and they fired in Overwatch at my men while they were moving and hit one of my fellows. So these guys are also vulnerable to them. It's a little bit worrying. So what I'm going to do... Receiving. Let's try and provide a little bit of cover. I'm going to move this last commando's infantry group up, and rather than move them the whole four and end their turn, I'm going to move them just three to there. On the move. Which means their turn is not yet over, and they can still take another action. And the other action, the next action I am going to do is I'm going to throw a smoke grenade into this position here in front of my own men and hope to p obscure this chap's line of sight. Popping smoke! Okay, the wind is actually taking it to the left there, but I think that's going to provide some decent cover for those chaps next turn. Okay, let's end this turn. There's the anti-tank gun. Oof, it's firing some high explosive down the beach at our friends. Oh, and the machine gun. Okay, these guys are having a bad time of it. He's decided to abandon his position, although he's still going to fire. He knows that another shell is coming in there. Well, I've got bad news for you, my friend. Another shell's coming your way anyway. And our player ally units, are they going to continue? Brave souls. They're continuing to rush up the beach. I don't know if it's going to go well for them. On the move. I'm going to try and help. On our way. Up they go. Okay. On our way. Okay. Well, they made it to the low wall. I'm not quite sure if they'll if that'll provide them with any if that'll give them any cover from these elevated positions. Not unit in fair line of sight. It does, just about. Okay, so they've done um, they've done all right there, but they are going to need some help. This fellow here, I'm a little annoyed about. Mm, yes, I'm sir. going to do. Worried about these chaps specifically. This machine gun at close range is going to absolutely cut them to pieces. If there's another machine gun here, which is still operational. I'm going to have to take another shot at this fellow. See if we can finish him. Yeah, there he goes. Okay, so the central machine gun has been eliminated. This chap is still going to be a little bit dangerous, but I need to take out this anti-tank gun so that I can move forwards. Do I have more smoke grenades? Receiving. I do. Okay, let's run this chap up to there. On the move. And just beyond the smoke. And throw another smoke grenade over there. Smoke. Gonna try and cover their advance. Lovely. These yes, fellows, can you get close enough to fire to throw a grenade in here? I think you can. 
this being these being commando units. Yes, sir. Even the LMG teams have grenades as well. So we're going to run up right up to the bunker. On our way. Through the smoke, up to the bunker. Hopefully still covered by that smoke to the left, and we're going to pop a grenade through the slit. Okay, killed one of the guys in there and completely suppressed it. So they're not taken out yet, but they are ineffective for the moment, and I'll pop another couple of grenades through next turn. Receiving. These chaps, let's run them up. I think if I get to here, I think the building is in the way. It is. Lovely. Okay. Receiving. These chaps are run straight up there. We're not going to pause and cower in the craters. These are commandos. They're going to charge through the smoke. Wonderful. Okay. All right, chaps, hold on for another turn, please. Hold on for another turn, and then I'll come to help you. There's that machine gun. Another casualty, and 40% suppressed. Oh, yeah. They're in open ground. You see, they can f they fire through the smoke, but it's uh, it obscures their, their vision. On the move. Little chance to hit. Come on, fellows. One lone man left of that infantry group. Nearly made it to the house. Okay, this guy's coming this way. They're going. Okay, so there. And he's he's just got up to the low wall as well. All right, fellows, what are you doing? Ah, heading round to the left. Okay. Um. What do we got? These guys, they may be trying to run out of this chap's line of sight, because he's in the middle. I think they're trying to flank him. Let's yes, sir. give them a bit of help, shall we? Turn this turret around. And let's get a shot in that window, see if they're so confident. Yep, one of them's down, and 20%. 30% suppression. Okay, good. So he's ineffective and he's taken a shot. I very much doubt he'll remain in that position. It's too dangerous for him now. This chap, however, is probably going to continue to be a nuisance. Right. Okay. Yes, sir. If I move... I... Hmm, what's the best way to do this? I think the... I need to get two units up towards this building so we can deal with him. So yes, you sir. run around the back. Will you join him? Just to the Yeah, that's safe. Receiving on the move. We're not gonna get too bogged down. Receiving. You move here. On the move. Stay prone, just move one, and then put another grenade in here. He's completely suppressed again, but he's resist they're resisting casualties. As long as I can keep suppressing this chap, sooner or later, a grenade's gonna land in the right place and finish him off. Okay. Yep. <clears throat> okay, yeah, he's moved out of that building. But his friend remains here. Did he make it? He's made it into that building, and there's no one there. Bravo! On the move. He's coming up to the wire. Ah, he's coming to help. Putting some fire into that bunker. I'm not sure that's going to help very much, but thank you. Okay, they've got a Bren gun team. Excellent work, chaps. I mean, not doing any damage, but I appreciate the help. What are these fellows going to do? Okay. Right, so these chaps have decided they're going to... They've seen a, a gap in the defences and they're going to try and loop around to the left. Um, okay, well, this chap's still a bit of a danger, so what I'm going to do... Yes, sir. ...is put a shot through his window as well. Two of them down, 70% suppression. Right, these guys are... ...very little threat at this point. Well, actually, he still is, but he's out in the open. I don't think he's going to want to stay there. Okay. Receiving. Come on, third grenade. Receiving. And that's it. Dealt with. All the crew dead. Okay. Let's get this guy yes, into sir. this building. 
Go run in the door. Ah, and they go. And from there, let's fire out of the window, get some fire on this chap. 20% suppression. Receiving. Follow it up. This chap may as well go into the building as well. There you go. I'm just going to skip that movement. There we are. Okay. Okay, looking good. This gun's out of action. That machine gun's out of action. These chaps have just one each remaining. I don't think they're that dangerous. And quite a few of our fellows have survived the beach. Where's he going to go? Ah, uh, he's joining his friend in that building. Okay, they decided to hold up together. And they moved to the back. Oh! Ah, okay. So they have a... They had some chaps covering that gap. These guys are going to fire at me, but I'm in the building, so... Fairly safe from their small arms fire. Oh, he's coming. Yeah, building hopping. On the move. Where are you going? He's going to come back over. On our way. Okay, so there, we're going to get into a bit of close range house to house fighting at this point, I think. With those last two remaining chaps. Okay, he's decided to pull back a little bit in the face of that other unit in that building. Okay. Now these guys outnumber them, so they should be able to get in there and clear these houses without too much help, but getting across here to take them is going to be difficult. So we're going to try and help them. Um, we're going to run this chap up to the back of... Actually, no. Let's just put him in there, move into that crater, and then put some fire on him. Lucky hit! And 20% suppression. Yes, sir. Bit more fire from the building. Another 20% suppression. And only one man left. Receiving. I'm going to run up and throw a grenade. On the move. Up we get. And a grenade into the position. And there he goes. Eliminated. Okay, so the right hand is looking good. We have lost one guy, I think, so far over here. Now, our good old centaur. Yes, Does he have any targets from where he is? He does not. They've moved to the back of the building. So let's move them up. Um, centaurs, uh, as vehicles, they have more movement options than just infantry who have generic move. We have advance, rotate, and reverse. We're going to advance, and we're going to try and make a. We're going to make a hole in the wire in a second. Move up this beach. And that's it, final action. I may be able to get a line of sight on that building as well. Not yet, not yet. Okay. <coughs> okay. Yeah. Okay, so these two guys are staying together and shifting a little bit away. Again, they're going to make assault, assaulting this building quite difficult, I think. It depends on if they have hand grenades or not. Okay, these guys are going to try. Yep, in they go. And, ooh, some overwatch fire inside the building. Didn't cause any casualties. And a grenade in response also didn't cause any casualties. Okay, the interior fighting begins. Okay, these guys have thought better than to try and move across this open ground. I think they're going to come and try and help their friends clear this house here. Right. Let's try and support them, shall we? Yes, sir. Mm, let's bring him up to here. Make a hole in this wire. Not that it matters at this point. All of our chaps are off the beach already. Okay, we'll move. Saving. In. I think we just need to sweep in. We just need to sweep in, don't we, really? So I'm going to skip him to there. Skip yes, him up to this point here. Receiving. These chaps across to On the, move. the... Okay, good. Hooking in from the right. Yeah, okay, this attack, on this hook on the left has stalled a little bit in the face of those chaps. Let's see if we can help them next turn. Oh, they have another machine gun. And I've lost another man. Internal fighting. It doesn't look like they have any grenades. I don't think they have any grenades in there. Okay, they've moved over uh, to try and fire across at me. What about our eyes? Come on. Here he goes. 
Oh, they had that window covered. On the move. Damn it. Bit of overwatch fire from the defenders. Okay, they're moving into the back of the building. Firing Bren gun up hit firing a Bren gun into the room. Well done. Okay. Right. Okay. It's a good job these guys haven't tried to run across this open ground yet, because there was also they had a machine gun team here as well. And he would have absolutely slaughtered them in that ground. Okay. Yes, sir. As it is, he has moved himself he's gone over here to deal with my commandos, and he's yes, put himself squarely in the sights. Of this centaur. Here we go. Yep. And that's him down. Wonderful. Okay, let's follow up. Get the good thing about commandos is that they're they're not slowed down by uh, rough terrain like uh, walls and hedges anywhere near as much as uh, normal units. They're light infantry specifically trained to so you can see in this Receiving. scenario we can actually move all four. The move of four will take us to there. Um, a normal infantry unit would have only been able to go to there. It would have cost them two to cross that one, another two to get to there, and it would have cost, if even if they'd had any more, it would have cost two to get into the building. But with commandos, we can hop the, we can hop this low wall, get across the short area of garden, and into the building all in one move, which is what we're going to do. Although I'm going to skip it. Oop, there we go. Okay. Yes, sir. And same with him. Hops two hedges. Nice and quick, Receiving. and you can come and support him. Okay, here we are. Pressure from the right. Okay, couple of shots out of the window. Too long range. And what about our allies? Okay, consolidating this side of the building. He's moving over. And is he going to finish him off? Are they? They, f they were ready. They fired. He fired a rifle through the door, killed one of them, and was answered with a grenade. So I think our, our friends here, their poor bloody infantry, regular infantry, have actually captured this line of buildings, but they still have to get across this area and finish him up. So we are going to help out yes, with the centaur. Aim the turret round here. We can aim at him. And another shot. And if we're very lucky... One, two, he's gone. Another sector of beach is clear, and we have secured a foothold. Well done. And that's victory. Two casualties in total. Turn eight, gold, only two casualties, and 15 of the enemy are down. Not bad. Okay, I'm going to take on the third of the story missions now. This is fire and maneuver. This is the first time we're going to be dealing with proper armoured combat. And I'm going to explain some of the mechanics specific to tank versus tank fighting. D-Day, midday. With the initial beach landing successful, British forces move into the fields beyond. In the lead, a reconnaissance troop of honey light tanks keeps a lookout for the enemy. Fire and maneuver. Reconnaissance units typically avoid engaging the enemy. Sometimes, however, a fight is unavoidable. Okay. He's knocked out. This is the unavoidable start of this mission. Fan out and keep moving. We'll have to rush him. So, these are, as we referred to uh, in the intro, uh, honey light tanks, more commonly known as stewards. Honey was the uh, affectionate uh, British forces name for these stewards. We'll refer to them as stewards from this point on. We have a look at them. We have one, two. We did have four. Unfortunately, this fellow has already been taken out. So we have three light tanks, and we are faced with a Sturmgeschütz. Um, Sturmgeschütz 3. Now this is a considerably more formidable uh, armoured vehicle than our Stuart light tanks. I'm going to have a little bit of a look at the stats for some of these units. 
so that you can see what I mean. Unit info on this machine here. It's American light tank in British service. The most important things we're going to be looking at here are the armor values and the penetration value. So the armor values uh, for this, they don't go above 51 millimeters effective. Uh, and the penetration is uh, uh, 46 only, 46 millimeters only. Now it's worth uh, clarifying that these penetration values as we use in game are as measured at 500 meters at a 30 degree angle of impact, which was the common standard uh, amongst the uh, allies, amongst, uh, amongst the British and Germans, in fact, for the day. So these, the light gun on this Stuart can um, penetrate, has a reasonable, has a good chance of penetrating 46 millimeters of armor at 500 meters at a 30 degree angle of impact. Closer than 500 meters, that figure will increase, and a more flat hit at less of an angle will also increase it. So effectively, the maximum penetration value at very close range on a flat hit is going to be probably closer to somewhere in the 60 millimeter, in somewhere between 60 and 70, even 70 millimeters, if you're very, very lucky. But it's a very, very small round on this little 37 millimeter gun. So the, the damage modifier, even if you do penetrate, it's a very small round, it's not like to do very much damage, we have a minus 0.2. So, in summary, this tank has very light armour, it's quite easy to take out, um, has a low toughness rating as well, which means it uh, reflects the fact that it's a small cramped tank, and once a penetration does actually occur, it's more likely that it will do significant damage. In summary, this is not a tank designed for uh, open combat. Um, it is really a reconnaissance unit. Uh, it has a small gun and light armor, but we have three of them. The enemy, by contrast, is a Sturmgeschütz. It has armor ranging up to 80 millimeters, and that long 75 millimeter gun, so common uh, in German forces, has a penetration of 96. So our armor is going to do absolutely nothing if we're hit by this. The chances are it's going to do significant damage. Uh, by contrast, if we fire back, you can see the front armor on this, it has no turret, although it has a turret a rear armor value, that's for a different purpose. Uh, the um, front armor on this is 80 millimeters, so even at a uh, even at a close range on a flat hit, we're not going to be penetrating that armor. We could try and hit the tracks, um, which are always a little bit vulnerable, even to lower caliber weapons, but um, going head to head with this chap uh, is going to be a recipe for disaster. So that's not what we're going to do. We're going to use our speed and maneuverability. Another reason that's a good tactic here is because this particular unit, as with quite a few uh, uh, German uh, assault guns and tank destroyers of the day, has no turret. Uh, he's going to be forced to turn the entire tank if he wants to draw a bead uh, on us. And turning the entire tank is uh, a very clumsy maneuver. Um, and it's very difficult for these units to turn the whole tank and then get an accurate shot within the same turn. So basically what we're going to have to do is try and dance around him and get a shot at his side or rear or try and hit him in the tracks. Uh, trying to hit him in the tracks uh, from long range is going to be very difficult so I'm going to dance around him a bit and uh, try and confuse him. The first thing we're going to do... What do we have? We've lost him, so... A raid along the front. This fellow over here, you can see these, these tanks are fast. They're pretty quick. So I'm going to move this guy off to his right flank. I'm going to pull him immediately off over here so that if he wants to fire at him, he has to turn the whole tank over here in order to do so. On the move. You can see, given the angle, he's going to have to rotate the whole tank if he wants to make a shot. And at that range, he's unlikely to be able to, to hit. We can do the same over on the left. Reporting. Run him out to the left. We're going to try and get a bit closer. There we go. Now this fellow in the middle. Yes, sir. He's already pointing at him. I'm not sure I can move far enough to either side. Um, what I could do is try and hide behind. No, there's no position in which he can't hit me. Okay. I'm just going to run him. I'm going to run yes, this fellow off to the right as well. On our way. Edge. Skip that movement. There he is at the end. Okay. 
Yep, he's turning and aiming. He's going to go for the shot. And he missed. So this is the thing about these. Without a turret... His frontal armor is too thick for our light guns. We'll have to flank him and get a shot at his side. When rotating the whole tank, subsequent shots become very, very inaccurate. So if I can keep moving, um, I think we can... I think we can have a decent chance of staying safe. Receiving. Okay. Okay. So there's a he has a blind spot here behind this behind this area of. If I check his line of sight, yeah, he can't see any of that. So Receiving. get this tank over there. On the move. I'm going to try and run him down here and get close. Get a shot at his side if we're lucky. Um, now he has turned to point in this direction, so I'm going to yes, I'm going to weave across his front and hopefully try and make him turn again way. back the other way. Yes, that's good. He's going to have to turn again if he wants to get a shot. Although I'm a bit closer now, so he might manage it. This fellow over here, I think he can see his side. I think this might be worth a go. Let's open the hatches. That just gives the cumulative aim bonus, which I'll talk about later, um, will be increased. And we're going to aim over at him. It's our chance to hit. 53% chance to hit him. I think it's worth a go. Ugh, yes. Okay. Okay. Let's see what he does. He's going to turn around again, fire again. Can he hit the hit? Oh, he's made the hit. Okay. Can't move. So... Keep your tanks moving. Don't let him get a bead on you. <laughs> yes, quite. Okay. So he's hit us. Didn't kill any of the crew, but he has immobilized the tank completely. So it looks like that went through... It's probably gone through the engine or was a low hit. So all our chaps are alive. Now, here we have a choice. Yes, sir. I can aim at him and fire, but I think it would be pointless. It would bounce off the front of that. I don't think I'd have any chance of penetration whatsoever. And next turn, he will fire again, and he will finish the job. So I'm yes, going sir. to bail the crew out in order to try and preserve them. Abandoning vehicle. And with any luck, we can run those chaps away. See, this tank is now no longer mine. Okay. This fellow Reporting. has been aiming at him already for one turn. So whilst we only had a 53% chance of hitting him a moment ago, aiming is cumulative. If you keep a unit still and you keep aimed at a unit that is also still and hasn't moved, then your chance to hit is increased every turn that, that is the case. Now, we have been aimed at him for a turn. It has increased to over 100% chance to hit, so we get the option of an accurate aim, which means not only will we definitely hit him, but I can choose where we hit him. Um, now at this angle, I don't think we have a chance of penetrating his frontal armour, and whilst his side armour is thinner, at this angle, there is no chance. It's going gonna, it's gonna to bounce straight off over there somewhere. So we're going to take this opportunity of accurate aim to hit him in the tracks and see if we can do some damage to his running gear. And we have... Some damage, he can still move, but he's going to be severely slowed down. That was actually a really good result. Okay. Now this Receiving. fellow... If after moving all that way, that'll be turnover. I won't be able to take the shot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop him just short, about here. On the move. He can move much... Vehicles can move further on, along roads in a single turn. And... Next turn, I'm going to move one forward, and I'm going to try and shoot him in the side. In preparation for that, I'm going to turn my turret already to face in this direction. So that when I do move out, I don't have to spend any gunnery points to turn the turret next turn. It's already pre-turned, and that'll make my shot more accurate, hopefully, when I get a bead on him. Okay. Turn three, end of. He's opened his hatches. He's... F yep. Okay, so even though we bailed out, it's good that we bailed out because he did indeed fire again at the same target. If you can immobilize him by hitting his tracks or disable his gun, the crew may bail out. 
you will find that the AI units will bail their crews out as well sometimes, if they think the situation is hopeless. Now we have another accurate aim over here. So I'm going to do it again. If I can hit him in the tracks and penetrate again, we may be able to immobilize him completely. Which would be marvellous, because I think that would mean game over. Tracks again. Yep, it's another one. Has he been immobilized? He has been immobilized. He cannot move. He cannot turn. And because he has no turret, that is very bad news for him. And I Receiving. can move one forward. On the move. And now I have... I'll aim. The aiming requires almost no gunnery points because I turned the turret last turn. I have a over 100% chance. I am not going to hit him in the tracks because the tracks are already disabled. It will do nothing. But I have a flat hit on his armour. Pretty much perpendicular to the armour plate, which is the best chance of penetration. I'm nice and close. I'm going to hit him in the hull and hope for a penetration from this light gun. And there he goes. Good hit. He's finished. Congratulations. Your first encounter with enemy armour and you handled it well. You will often be outgunned in the coming campaign, but it just goes to show firepower isn't everything. And there we are. Four casualties each. Um, we did nominally lose the bailed out. Oh, we did lose the bailed out. Um, Stuart, because it was subsequently destroyed. But they lost a Stangerschutz, which is a... Uh, Valuable, valuable asset. I see, and another gold. My victory in turn four. Okay, I'm going to conclude there. That's the first three missions and uh, a guide as to how to win them. Uh, the next time I hop on, I will be talking through some of the uh, some of the follow-up early missions using combined arms. Probably beginning with uh, Crossroads. Here they come. Um, but until then, enjoy playing. Thanks very much.